Great. Yeah. So thank you folks for, for taking the time out. Um, yeah. Like I mentioned, I think the, the title is a bit mouthful, but it's really just a pivot on innovating and transformating within the healthcare space um, and with a real focus on how data, uh, you know, using data, we are able to, to bring about that transformation and innovation. I think a lot of organizations are going through digital modernization within their business, especially in the healthcare space. Uh, and a lot of what we'll advocate here today is really just talking through that. So, you know, what is Amazon Web Services sort of mission for life and health sciences? Um, and it's really very clear. Um, it's very simple in terms of uh, what we look to achieve. You know, being able to promote that access and the delivery of patient-centered healthcare uh, is really key to our strategy. And, you know, you ask how do we do that? And it's really focused around um, improving the, the outcomes, um, uh, healthcare outcomes, and, and lowering the cost associated with digitization and the utilization of healthcare data, you know, in a nutshell. You can see there's fundamentally four principles um, that underpin our mission. Uh, and it's centered very briefly around security and compliance. Uh, I think we find this within the healthcare industry, particularly today, that the advent of uh, cyber security attacks and uh, security, uh, security vulnerabilities that we heard from the 40 net speaker earlier uh, today had pivoted on that specifically. And making sure that data privacy is of paramount importance, right? Patients want to ensure that their data is in a secure um, environment or platforms um, and that no one else has access to that data. Whereas if you look at healthcare payers and providers, they want to ensure that they can protect customers' data um, and give the customers the, the, the trust um, that the data is being used in the means that it is intended for. Um, secondly, is, like I mentioned, was the pivot around innovation, right? And I think this is something that AWS holds very dear to our heart, is focusing that uh, our, our mission on innovation, making sure that we can provide that sort of deepest and, and broadest kind of portfolio of cloud-based services, including the purpose-built healthcare solutions that I'll briefly touch on today. Uh, the third one is really uh, the core of my presentation, which is unlocking the value of data and providing that actionable kind of insights, you know, whether it comes from clinical, operational, research data, or even just personalized treatments, you know, to the point where we're able to predict healthcare outcomes before they actually event. You know, as an individual, um, you know, I would want to be in a situation that knows that if my lifestyle, if I'm not eating right, if I'm not getting the necessary exercise, and by taking my kind of ECG kind of um, health indicators, and it's telling me that, you know, in the next six months, if I continue on that trend, I might find myself um, having a heart attack. That's the kind of predictive insights that we want to be able to provide um, by using that kind of data. Um, so, and I'll share with you later on how we can do that. I think the last thing is what uh, was spoken about um, our colleague from Netcare, which was really around personalizing that healthcare journey and being able to see how you're able to effectively manage from bed to, um, to, to bedside um, and, and making sure that the, the full life cycle um, is, is taken care of and that the patient is put at the center of that experience. Uh, just very briefly, um, I don't like talking too much about what Amazon do, but I just wanted to give you a sense in terms of our experience within the healthcare market. So as an organization, as a cloud service provider, we know we've essentially been operating for the last 13 years. Um, providing those kind of cloud um, platforms from a um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, um, and applications as a service. From a healthcare perspective, you know, it's a dedicated practice for us over the last eight years, focusing specifically on working with customers within the healthcare and life sciences space. Uh, you'll also get to see that there's a number of products and services that we offer, you know, and focus very much on HIPAA eligible services. So you'll find that out of our 200 plus Amazon uh, products worldwide, 106 of those are HIPAA eligible. Making sure that we get the compliance and the regulatory compliance from a healthcare perspective is obviously very important. We have a large number of, of healthcare customers, you know, averaging about more than 1,100 at the moment globally, all using AWS on the very kind of workloads. And you'll notice that nine out of the 10 biopharmaceutical companies are using AWS um, to, to do a lot of their biopharmaceutical kind of biopharmaceutical workloads on AWS. You're also finding that, you know, uh, for a healthcare market, um, we are the leading cloud service provider in the space, you know, by more than twofold uh, of, of our nearest competitor. And so we're finding that healthcare customers are using AWS more regularly within the cloud space. Um, you know, I think a lot of what we are advocating with the market is earning the trust, earning customers' trust um, in terms of being able to provide these kind of services uh, to, to the market. 
um, you know, making sure that the customers have the high accreditation um, that's needed within the cloud as well, and that data is secure is obviously paramount to our success. Um, again, yeah, just testament to to that success. I think everyone's familiar with Gartner, and this is Gartner's magic quadrant. Um, you know, talking about the cloud leaders within the marketplace, and you can get to see there that AWS is recognised as the cloud leader for the last ten consecutive years, according to their magic quadrant for cloud infrastructure and platform services. So I think it's really just testament to say that AWS is obviously been one of the the um, you know the forward thinking. Um, visionaries and leaders within the cloud market space uh, in terms of the depth and the breadth of the, of the services that we provide in the cloud. Enough of that, I think <clears throat> very much just focusing on our healthcare uh, business, right? So what is really important for us as AWS is ensuring that we've got the alignment into the, national, into the international healthcare programs, making sure that the organizations like the World Healthcare Organizations, um, organizations that are focusing on USAID, PEPFAR, PATH, there's a number of these worldwide organizations that we've been lined with, and all of them have come together with some sort of global strategy for digital healthcare. You know, and being a prominent player within the digital transformation journey, uh, it was important for us to ensure that we are aligned with these kind of digital health interventions. So a lot of our products and our services have taken this specifically into mind. We've got this concept of AWS around working backwards from the customer, and these kind of research interventions give us the indication of what the customer is saying. So a lot of what we've done is taken these kind of digital interventions or strategies, <clears throat> excuse me, and have worked backwards from there in terms of putting together our strategy and then our products um, that are built for, for, for market. And really just trying to again install that we are um, understanding what it is that the customers are wanting within the healthcare space, you know, whether that be payers, providers, um, healthcare nonprofits, health tech companies that are building businesses off the back of solutions within the healthcare market is all driven by these kinds of interventions. Uh, just to give you a bit of a snapshot as to who our customers are that we work with, I spoke earlier about there being 1,100 plus customers, but you know, we really are working very closely with some of the largest healthcare organizations across the world. You know, companies like the CDC in putting together their kind of COVID response was a very important workload for us. Um, working with the worldwide organizations like GE Health and Philips Health, um, you know, a host of public sector and private organizations that are focused around bringing innovation within the healthcare space. Um, come for biopharmaceutical companies, like I mentioned, like Roche, um, Cerner, another big name for us in terms of a call out there. I mean, each of them have used AWS services in a, in a very kind of way. We've got case studies on any of those. If, uh, if anyone would be interested in one, you see it, and that's available on the AWS website. Um, so really covering the depth and breadth of uh, healthcare and, and, uh, and life science organizations across the world. Looking a bit closer to home from a South African perspective, you can get to see some of the local customers that we are working with, right? So organizations like the National Department of Health, um, you know, one of our, large, our largest payer, in fact, Discovery Health being a prominent customer of ours, <clears throat> as well as MedScheme, you know, two large uh, payers within that space. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a few, yeah, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but I think, you know, one of the, uh, the panelists on the member would actually refer to the fact of Care Connect. Uh, this is a healthcare nonprofit organization uh, that have built a health information exchange um, for the top eight healthcare, private healthcare providers in South Africa. So think of the Discovery Health, the Med Schemes, the Life Health Cares, the Net Cares, the MediClinics. Those organizations have come together from a private healthcare perspective and put together this health information exchange, you know, which runs on AWS as empowered by our partner, Care Connect. That is a real instrumental kind of shift forward within the context of data and data, providing data-driven insights. So when, when a patient goes to one of those hospital groups, yeah, they are effectively ensuring that that health record and that patient record is followed follows them whichever uh, private healthcare provider they may go to, and I think that's an important point. You know, we see with the advent of um, of the South African government wanting to go that route as well, and being able to ultimately bridge that gap between public and private. I think we saw a stat there earlier that spoke to the fact that you know more than eighty percent of our population is in fact uninsured and within the public healthcare system. So making sure that that data coincides with the data within the private, with the remaining 20% that sits within the private sector space is important because it's going to give us that holistic view of patients across, um, across our unified healthcare system, irrespective of whether they're private or public. 
So yeah, that, that's a bit of a snapshot there around what Care Connect is doing. You know, organizations like Righty Pharmacy doing some great work around last mile medicine dispensing within the rural areas. And they've created some great innovations <clears throat> around um, a lot of collect and go lockers where medicine can be dispensed out into a locker. I think many of you have seen these lockers across the country. You get a one-time pin and the, the patient is able to then go and collect these medicine at these lockers and, and they distribute across convenient locations across the country so that patients that do not of means don't have to go and take multiple modes of transport and buses and taxis to go and get their medication at a retail outlet. They can do that out in the community deployed by these kind of uh, locker innovations and these uh, pharmacy dispensing units which they, which they provide. So yeah, that's just a bit of a snapshot around what we're doing in South Africa with some of those customers. Uh, again, details are available um, should you want to get more detail. <clears throat> so as we look at those organizations and, and many that are on the call here today, the focus is very much on digital transformation. We understand that this is key in order to improve the quality of care, um, you know, help with the operational efficiencies that we're talking about, um, being able to accelerate that therapeutic development processes that exist within the healthcare space. And making sure that organizations can use technology to be able to, re uh, to, to realize their goals um, in addressing some of the challenges that exist within their business. Um, we also understand that the healthcare market is highly regulated and it's a complex industry. You know, various global compliance requirements uh, further complicate uh, the healthcare and life science organization and field. So a move towards digital transformation is really important and it helps address those kind of uh, highly regulated uh, requirements that exist. But I think the reality of today, we are finding that many organizations are not finding that right technology partner to help assist them with those kind of challenges and help them progress along this journey of digital transformation. This is where AWS has come to the fore and introduced a concept known as uh, AWS for healthcare. And it's really around it accelerating that innovation from bedside to bed, a bed top to, to bedside that I referred to earlier. So, you know, what is this AWS for health? Um, and really what it is, is an ability for us to be able to have built 16 comprehensive purpose-built healthcare solutions and services. And we've done this in combination with a trusted partner, a healthcare partner network. So we've gone and partnered with a variety of organizations worldwide and in South Africa that have helped take a lot of these, uh, these services, these healthcare services up and have built um, specific solutions that are geared off the back of that. And that's focused in the areas of healthcare, traditional healthcare solutions, biopharmaceutical solutions, and then genomic solutions, right? And it was important for us to be able to work with a partner network uh, in country to be able to do that. So customers have the satisfaction of knowing that they are trusted partners that work alongside with us to go and essentially build out these solutions. Obviously, you know, on the link over there, you'll be able to see what those particular solutions are. But I mean, things like electronic medical records, telemedicine solutions, um, being able to diagnostic imaging solutions um, to genomics, um, clinical genomic research uh, solutions. Uh, the, the, you know, the list goes on in terms of uh, in terms of those innovations that have been put together there. What's really great about this is, you know, it's fine that there are solutions that they are partners, but there's a, you know, there's an a, a implementation path of success there that exists um, between having to, to uh, solve problems for healthcare customers using these kind of technologies. So what customers have is the luxury of being able to go to this uh, platform or even to our AWS marketplace and go and purchase these solutions straight off uh, the bat and deploy them to the cloud within minutes. And I think that's really where the power of cloud comes in, is that you're able to get up and running very quickly, time to market gets reduced. So if an organization needs to go and deploy a vanilla electronic medical record and then customize it off the back of that with one of our partners, they can literally do that in a couple of weeks, two months, um, really based on what their requirements are. But getting up and running quickly is really what the cloud has to offer. All of that obviously underpinned by, you know, the scalability and the security that the cloud brings uh, to, to the market today. Um, in terms of ensuring that we can offer that kind of reliable infrastructure uh, that's in secure and, set and scalable, you know, AWS has obviously invested significantly in our global infrastructure. You know, we operate in 12, 25 regions. Those are distinct locations across the, 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 the world. And you can see down there in Africa, we've got the AWS Africa or Cape Town region, as we refer to it. You know, each one of those regions are made up of a number of availability zones. And think of as an availability zone as a unique, oper uniquely operated and run data center. 
So in essence, we've got three data centers down in the, in the Africa region. Each of them are independently operated and run um, that are connected by our own fiber backbone. So we own, we run, we manage those data centers worldwide. It's not co-located, it's not outsourced. It's something that we've significantly invested upon across the globe and more so here in Africa. Um, and each of them obviously, you know, geographically dispersed. Uh, they've got their own kind of um, their own kind of electricity supply capabilities, especially in lieu of some of the challenges that exist in South Africa with electricity supply. So we've ensured that we mitigate that kind of risk. Um, and even so, I mean, you may have seen recently where we've gone and uh, been quite progressive in the space around um, promoting a kind of green economy by uh, using solar farms that are developed uh, in the Eastern Cape or run in the Eastern Cape to supply electricity to, out to our data centers with intention to become green neutral uh, in the years to come. So I think that's that's a very positive message to install there and even being able to provide um, the uh, supply of electricity back into the ESCOM grid off the back of the investment of that nature. So we're really looking to be sustainable in how we operate our data centers and then even being able to contribute to South African sustainability further with electricity supply through this investment. But yes, that's essentially how we do it. And you know, we find that organizations that are wanting to deploy solutions closer to the customers that they have can go and do so. You know, perhaps they have users sitting out in Bahrain or in Dubai or in whatever the case be, or in the Europe and Americas, they can go and deploy the specific solutions they have into those regions uh, and thereby reduce latency to their users uh, by, by doing so. Um, so yeah, I think I've spoken to the fact around security compliance being really important to us at AWS, making sure that we've accredited ourselves with kind of 50 plus global compliance and certification accreditations um, that exist within the marketplace from your ISO organizations right through to uh, HIPAA eligible like I've spoken about as well as High Trust, you know, the Health Information Trust um, organization that you can get certified for in terms of a solution that you deploy in the cloud. Like I've mentioned, data privacy is very key. So making sure that data, uh, GDPR um, uh, is, is uh, in adherence and compliant on AWS technologies. And then from a local perspective, the Poppy Act, um, the Poppy Act and the compliance of customers' data or patients' data within the public cloud is adhered to. And we've got a lovely white paper that talks specifically as to how AWS our services deployed in the AWS cloud um, can ensure Poppy compliance. Um, making sure that it dissects the Poppy Act down to each one of the clauses and shows how we specifically have addressed those specific requirements within the Poppy Act. Giving customers that sense that data, privacy and security and compliance in the cloud is all a tick, tick, tick for us. Um, so yes, then I spoke about those specifically those 16 solution areas. Um, here is a bit of a snapshot of some of them. And these are purpose-built solutions owned, developed and run by AWS. A lot of what we are finding is that customers are taking these Lego blocks, these healthcare Lego blocks ultimately, and are putting them together to build out a specific solution. Call it a electronic medical record, call it a identity access management solution for healthcare services, um, call it a healthcare based contact center uh, capability or chatbot functionality. It's that kind of idea that essentially Amazon brings is this box of Lego blocks 200 of those blocks. Here is a snapshot of some of them, um, really just the healthcare ones and saying, how can you actually take those various Lego blocks and build out your proverbial pirate ship or whatever it is that you're looking to build out, right? In the sense of, uh, of a Lego block analogy. But you'll get to see some of those use cases there. I mean, I, I'd spoken about it and I'll touch it on later is Amazon Health Lake, which is really our go-to-market product when it comes to um, transforming and analyzing data, you know, at petabyte scale uh, and bringing in the kind of AI and machine learning predictive analytics all built within the product, not requiring some sort of need for data science or uh, machine, molding, uh, machine um, learning model creation. All of that is taken care of in the product. You'll see a host of other services over there. You know, I think uh, a real great one is the advancement within AI and ML. <clears throat> Excuse me. So services like um, and, you know, medical natural language processing capabilities, which maps ICD-10 codes and script normalizations, uh, speech to uh, speech to text kind of services. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I think you can read them on the screen, which really then talks to the ability to be able to get a good handle on healthcare data and how to drive that data-driven insights that I referred to at the beginning of the presentation. 
Um, I think we all understand within the healthcare market that the amount of data that exists out there, it's inconsistent, it's unstructured, it's complex in nature. You know, it, it's spread across a different myriad of workloads from lab reports to clinical studies to x-rays, um, you know, to conversational notes, doctor's notes, etc. The challenge obviously that exists with the industry is how do you bring all of that together in a meaningful way? that can be used to essentially create that kind of data-driven insights that I referred to and create that kind of predictive analytics that both patients uh, and clinicians are requiring in order to diagnose and treat specific ailments. This is where I've mentioned around Amazon Health Lake, right? And it's really our ability to be able to identify trends and make predictions. Uh, it's quite a powerful product when you get under the hood and get to see how, to, how it uh, runs, but the ability to be able to not just import that data uh, and make predictions of it, but it's also to enable interoperability. Now we know that this data in today's sense exists with, within uh, hospital information systems or exists within you know, different kind of databases. I mean, if you look at government's tier.net architecture, it's disparate across provinces. Promoting interoperability is really important. How do you extract data out of those multiple line of business systems and put them into a single data lake concept? And that's really what Health Lake is looking to address, is bring all of that data from decentralized systems into a single repository, analyzing it, reporting it, and making predictions. Um, and that's really where it pivots on. Um, so just that ability, like I've said, around importing, storing, analyzing, and then the power to be able to query and search the information that you're looking for within that health lake. Um, and just the advent of that pre-built machine learning models is really powerful. We've got models over there that analyze cancer or oncology ailments, uh, focusing on diabetes, on TB, on HIV, and of course now of COVID. Um, so those models that are pre-built, they learn, they evolve over time, and whatever data you put into them, they just have the ability to obviously then learn further and create a better kind of output for uh, predictions. Uh, here's an example of the campaign medical I spoke about. So here's yeah. a typical kind of doctor script. Sorry, sorry for yeah. interrupting, JP. Um, um, I think we're just also running out of time. If you can okay. maybe just focus right on the on. next two minutes in terms of wrapping up. Good, I'll do that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, just a quick snapshot there of a typical doctor's note and how we use campaign medical to do ICP pen cap and normalization and, and that way. Um, and that's really the end of my, my story. I think it's really focused around accelerating the digital health care in the cloud and how we look to do that through our services, how we empower data and really improve on those clinical outcomes and a big focus on the patient experience. I mean, one of the products we're releasing in South Africa now, MC Connect, which is our cloud-based contact center solution. Within minutes, again, being able to put a patient contact center solution in place, really personalizing the hospital journey. So yeah, that's really our story uh, to the market. Thank you very much for your for your time, and uh, I'll hand back over to Brenda. Thanks, JP. I think great great presentation around you know the capabilities of how AWS can drive patient outcomes. Um, you know, while we're potentially waiting for a few questions to come through from from our participants, um, maybe just a couple of questions from my side. So I mean, if you think about the cloud space in recent years, the two biggest um, barriers towards migrating or moving or leveraging a cloud in any organization have been the data sovereignty as well as the compliance and the security around how that data is actually governed and how that data is used within that cloud infrastructure. And I think you know AWS have made significant strides and and, and investment to to not only tackling uh, the issue of data sovereignty and bringing in local data centers, which alleviates complete, that problem completely. But as you mentioned, you know, the adherence to uh, all of the different um, compliance for from a data protection perspective is there. Uh, what are some of the other barriers that you are potentially seeing with customers around their uh, resistance or hesitation to move towards the cloud? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of pre preconceived notions of putting systems and putting data into the cloud. I think we've seen a string of them in, in the media, and it really comes down to trust. I think customers are not at the point where they are effectively trusting that their systems can well be run and managed in the cloud and no one else having access to that. And I think that's a fundamental difference is people that know this cloud space that have played with it will understand that no one through access controls and identity access management, no one, not even AWS has access to customers' data or systems. And that's an important point to understand. 
it's through that kind of security protocols that are baked into each of our products, and even in our infrastructure, is that when you go and deploy a virtual private cloud in AWS, your data, your applications, your services that you spin up are all yours. They, they're protected by uh, multi you know, levels of encryption that not even we can get access to it. Um, so even if a third party authority like a law enforcement authority wanted to do request data from a customer, we simply cannot, we don't, because the customer has the, public, uh, has the private keys to, to that information and systems. So trust becomes a very important factor. And the only way you really overcome that is really trying, is, is getting into the cloud, starting out, taking a very small workout, even if it's for backup or even if it's DRM test, uh, systems and applications, getting that into the cloud, playing with it, getting a feel for it to really understand where the data residency and those trust issues get addressed. Through that, they get to experience that, okay, well, now it is as it's advocated that data in the cloud and systems in the cloud can be far more resilient and they'll see the power of it. You know, their systems, how their systems are able to scale, how they're able to auto scale based on demand. And it's all based on a pay per use model, right? So you only pay for what you use. You use it for one hour, you pay for an hour, you don't use it for any hours, you don't pay. It's based on that kind of model that you don't have, you're not locked into multi-year kind of contracts that bind customers into using technology, whether they use it or not. And I think that's a fundamental difference. Thank you. No, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for the presentation. Um, hope to see you again in another uh, IT News Africa. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks.